Hello, everybody, and welcome to Digital Illustration and Storytelling with Jeff Wilson. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Just want to uh, thank all our uh, sponsors and partners, I should say, in this project. We have the Canada Council for the Arts, the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library. My name is Tom Sternad, and I'm the uh, lead digital artist of this project, and really happy that uh, we're able to bring this to you. So this is our monthly session where we essentially look at digital, we call it digital illustration cartooning and, uh, and storytelling. So it's really all of these elements, and uh, we're, we're really pleased that we can uh, bring this to you. We are using the Procreate uh, app, and, uh, and the great thing about the Procreate app is that, um, you know, you can, you can uh, access it. So it's available for low cost on uh, iPads and iPhones. And you can also take out these wonderful iPads from all our library partners. So you can access an iPad with an Apple Pencil, just like what Jeff's using and with the Procreate software. So, and also these are available to rewatch. So after we're done, you can rewatch these and enjoy them again. And uh, we're always happy to get any feedback. So you can send me an email, tom at tbmcs.ca if you have any questions or information. So I'm gonna pass it over to Jeff and he's gonna take you on today's, uh, today's journey and adventure. Here we go, here's Jeff. Okay, thank you, Tom, and welcome everybody. It's good to be back with you again. And uh, today uh, I got a pretty exciting topic and it's, um, it, it, it can be far ranging or it can be very simple. It, uh, but uh, take it for, for what it is. Um, I'm going to talk about how um, we can digitally make um, something that, something that uh, has a certain role in our lives and, and create something else for it. So I'm talking about um, uh, cartoons, for example, like uh, comics. Uh, where you can have uh, an animal speaking or an animal standing up on its back legs and, and like a person. And you can uh, do that with inanimate objects as well. And uh, so I'm going to go in, get into a little bit of this and a little bit of the um, the other things you can do that I'm sure that uh, um, that will probably come up if you as you get into it. I know it came up for me, um, uh, things like how did you make... <laughs> Uh, if you're doing a political cartoon, how can you show a, a political way, a political thought uh, in, in a picture? And, and that's a real, a very real problem that, uh, that that's, it's a challenge, I should say, not a problem. It could be a problem, but it's a challenge that a lot of uh, cartoonists face. So we'll get into that later on. I think I'm going to just start with the most logical start to it, and that's creating a, a character that that is an animal that wouldn't normally um, be like a human being. And I've, I've certainly drawn a lot of these as a cartoonist in my career. So um, what I've done is I've gone ahead and I prepared a, a light background here. And I've, you'll notice uh, on the background, if you can see it there, that it's kind of um, not kind of a pastoral setting. It's got a background of a, some trees and, and, and some fields. And in this, um, when I'm doing sketching and doodling, these invariably come up in my cartoons because I grew up on a farm and uh, the, the that period in my life greatly impacted what I do as a cartoonist. It certainly, um, it certainly is at this stage, at the doodling stage. So what I, I have done here is created a, um, a little background here. And this is, this is, wow, I grew up on a farm and this really brings back a lot of memories. So that actually is very kind of healthy, kind of therapeutic to just look at this, what I've done here. I just kind of doodled this out earlier. So what I've done here is created the background. So uh, in your background, it generally will be, um, your horizon will be about, about to a third to two thirds up. If we're having some acting going on here, uh, we might want to have it uh, two thirds up so we got, uh, here, this area here is uh, going to be our acting space that, uh, below the uh, horizon line here. So, so anyway, below here, between here and here will be our, our acting space. So, so uh, what I'm going to do is create a, another layer here. And we do that on our top right side. The layers are the, uh, the two blue squares here. Uh, if you want to create a new layer, there's that at, uh, the cross or the plus sign, I call it. And we can create a new uh, layer here. So, um, just I'm just going to create a basic cartoony type figure. I'm going to change the color here, just so we understand that um, this, this is something a little different than that we're doing than the background part. So, I'm just going to do a doodle a uh, basic cartoony figure here. 
Here, I can turn the uh, actually turn the camera of the of the uh, I or the uh, <laughs> my computer toward the screen, and I think hope we can see it there. See, I got some reflection of some background light here. See if I can avoid that. And let's just try it here. Okay, and uh, so we got circle for the head and kind of a pear shape for the body. And uh, have some tubes for legs, basically, and some um, and some ovals for the feet here. And this could be a human or an animal or whatever you want. It could. It, it doesn't. We haven't decided yet. Um, we've just got a basic cartoony figure, and this is this is the great part about cartooning is that we can take basic things universal things and, and generic things and we can make uh something non-generic out of it something quite unique out of it so uh this could be a thousand characters it's uh, it's our uh basic two let's see this would be three and a half heads tall so this is our basic three and a half heads tall character here and and most cartoony type characters are two and a half to three and a half heads tall and uh so we'll start so let's try to think of an animal that we would like to put in a cartoon or uh you know something other than a human being we this could be a human being we could put an eyes and a nose and a mouth and ears human ears whatever or we could uh think of a a creature some creature in the animal kingdom that we'd like to draw so let's uh let's say a a horse <laughs> a horse i just uh looked out my window and saw um a Amish family going down the road on their wagon here. So here in Grey Highlands. So I'm going to do a horse here in our little drawing. So horses have uh, the big nose, of course, the snout. And actually they're, because of it, it will be a horse. I am going to modify this and take away this large head because with the horses, their heads are not really that big their bodies are bigger than their heads so i'm going to reduce the size of the head a bit here so i'm going to make a bigger neck because horses have very large necks here and put a smaller head here and put a bigger snout on it so this is this is where researching what you're doing uh, it really is important so then put some ears on it on the character a couple of eyes and of course, horses have the mane, the, the hair that, at the back. And this is our cartoon horse, basically, not the two-legged cartoon horse. And we could we could add some features to it. What I'm going to do now is uh, create another layer. And we're going to use our pen tool, which is the same tool we use for penciling, but we, we can choose in our library here the inking tool which uh, i prefer the studio pen and i'm going to use a nice black line for that so i'm going to try to get 100 percent black what i'm doing now is i'm reducing the cmyk or the cmy in the color uh, selector increasing the k which mean, which means black uh, c the cyan which is a form of blue m is magenta which is a form of uh, red without a lot of yellow and then yellow pure yellow and uh, k is pure black and we're going to do some some neat tidy up here with our character let's uh increase that line a bit here and on the left side here of course you can increase or reduce your uh your brush width your opacity here i'm going to keep the opacity pretty high here to 100 percent and of course we can use our fingers on the iPad and we can zoom in here so we can get a good control of it. Still not happy with that line width. I think that's better. And, and as I do it, I can do a swash here and I can get the nice um, difference in the depth and the width of the line. And uh, just put some tufts of hair here for the horse. couple of eyes and of course the muzzle for the horse we can play with the mouth here we can have it smiling whatnot a couple of 
couple of uh, nose holes and I'm just going to increase the brush here for the main because I think that's that will that will be fun to uh, give it a little bit of width there for the uh, for the main and then uh, fill out the rest of the body here too we'll just increase that length here and we've mapped out our our body and we can just finish finish it off here We could take our eraser tool and we can just kind of neaten up some of the stuff that we doesn't look that beautiful, beautiful uh, tools that uh, Procreate has. We can add little things like little under the eyes. And it kind of looks like a horse. Why does it look like a horse? Well, because we took a couple of moments to assess the, the shape here a bit. I'm just going to go back and we're going to see some of the choices we made here now we we had a large head at the start but it seemed to me that looking at a, an, an actual horse the main part of their head is is small compared to their muzzle so i modified that so that and then the long neck horses are very uh, strong in the neck and, and they're very long and of course they're very maneuverable in that area of the body and the rest of the body is just basically of your basic cartoon character so so that's that's uh something we have to do as cartoonists is study study the uh, uh the other the animal universe basically i guess and let's try another character here let's just do the same thing we did before we're going to take a uh, and and use the uh <laughs> the red marker tool again and i'm going to go back to our our drawing tool and we'll just do a sketch here of another another cartoon character or will we maybe we won't okay let's just create a new layer and let's hope that this works yeah again we're going to just do a basic the pear shape as the body and uh So what uh, what could we make this time? Well, it could be another animal. It could be um, a bear. Let's make it simple. It could be a bear. Bears often do have large heads, so that and teddy bears certainly do, as we know uh, if we have teddy bears. And we'll put a couple of little ears on them, a, a little muzzle. And bears are pretty burly bodies, so we're going to make sure that we incorporate that in the in the anatomy of our of our bear character here. So there we go. We've kind of got uh, basically what a bear would look like. And a little tail, of course. So we've we've recognized in, in bears, they've got these smaller ears, kind of uh, tiny ears, fairly pronounced head. And it can be roundish or it can be I'll tell you what I prefer with their, with bears' heads is a little more width. They, I find them a little wider than round. I'm just going to go back here. So I'm going to modify the head a bit here. I'm going to make it kind of an oval this way. And, and we can actually hold our, our brush and we can edit the shape here a bit. And change that a bit there if you hold your tool after drawing an ellipse it will actually in procreate it'll actually create uh, an ellipse a perfect the ellipse or a perfect circle and you can edit that yeah i think i like that so i think that's the shape i would prefer to use for a bear and i've done a, a few cartoons of bears and that's always seems to work best that way and, and the muzzle actually looks more natural too and the eyes closer together so to me that that looks more like a bear than than what i what i've seen uh in the past so there you go so there's there's your bear character and you can put a smile on them. you can give them expressions you can put a nose like that there you go and we're going to go to a 
a final uh, drawing here. Just create a new layer. Put that plus sign there, and we'll change our again our tool to uh, the the uh, pen tool, the inking tool here, the Studio Pen, which is uh, in the inking category here. We've created a new layer, and I think we've got the pen tool exactly where we want it. And we can begin putting the finishing touches on our our bear cartoon here. And again, we've basically used the, uh, I'm going to give them a little thicker neck than I showed there before, but, uh, and uh, just a closed paw here because he's, he's walking fairly, um, yeah, he's walking fairly confidently here in the, in the drawing. That's a little tough for a tail. Maybe just thicken his trunk up. up. Oops, what have I done here? Sometimes that's why I wear these gloves is because I uh, can tend to uh, the heat from my hand. I've got very sweaty, clammy hands, so that's why I wear this glove. It's not uh, not a fashion statement by any means. And uh, then thicken up these legs. Give them some depth of the line. And uh, the other thing you can do is to show a coat of an animal in particular, you can just do some cross hatching. You don't have to do it on the whole character. You can just do, you know, uh, what I often do is just do it at the bottom part of the, um, of the character, because that's where, where light would, you know, the rest of the, uh, character, the light would, uh, would shine on it. So it wouldn't be that noticeable, the coat, but in areas out, outside of the, the light, it would be maybe a little more noticeable. So we'll, we'll just do it in those areas, like on the bottom of the foot and whatnot. There we go. Okay. Little extra touches there and around the face as well. Doesn't hurt to just kind of, uh, and if you want to, too, the beauty of, of Procreate is you can take, if you're done with that um, that sketch line, you can just take it right off. Just hit the uh, hit the, uh, the checkbox here. Boom, gone. You're, uh, you're good. And then you can actually, it helps you to see where, you, what you need to fill in or whatever, too. It helps you to, gives you the eye to do that. And we can certainly put some, uh, Cross hatching here under the uh, under the neck as well, and so this is kind of a nice cartoony bear. It's kind of a nice uh, fun thing, and uh, but again, let's let's go back and study what what makes this a bear and not and not something else. Again, it was the uh, the shape of the head. Um, I, I started with a round head, and it just didn't uh, look like a bear to me. the The bear sh bear's head is fairly big. And fairly broad, and, uh, and part of the um, the nature of the animal, the, how it, this distinct from other animals, is the broadness of the face and head. And of course, they don't have a huge muzzle, but it is pronounced; it is noticeable. And I kind of sharpened it a bit, just made it smaller. And some breeds of bear are have smaller snouts, like the grizzly, for example, is a is has got the broader head, and the ears, of course, are very uh, the small rounded ears are very much like bears and then we get into the the body and it's um it's basically a um a, a little thicker in the body than we had originally and that are for our basic character and we added some feet and hands and in the end we ended up having our bear whoops our bear <laughs> whoops here we go there's our bear right there and in the acting area here you can um Get them to do whatever you want. You can. You've got your basic uh, model designed for your bear. So the other uh, part of the lesson, which I think I'd like to get into uh, right now, would be um, inanimate objects, which are um, something that 
cartoons don't usually deal with. I mean, uh, one of the things you might deal with would be a car. That's, uh, that's something that people have done is, 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 an, is animated cars to be like people. And cars are actually have an interesting design. We're, we're just going to get into it a little bit here. I've got a, created a new layer here, and I'm going to use my drawing tool. And uh, we'll remember, we're talking about an inanimate object. Like it's um, a car would be a logical one we'll get into, but um, we'll get into others that are very unlikely that, that I've had to do in my career and, and uh, talk a little bit about it and show you some examples of it in just a few minutes here. But um, let's do a little car here. Now, cars have the headlights, which, of course, could be like um, like a f eyes. So you, you have to remember this. Um, when you're bringing inanimate objects to life, you're, you're bringing it to uh, in a way that, that the, the reader, the human being reading it, will um, can identify animated things. <laughs> so... So you have two eyes and you have a mouth somewhere in a logical place for where the character would speak. So in this case, it would be the like the grill of a car would be like the mouth. And uh, or if that's one way of doing it, you, there are many ways, of course, of doing animating uh, cars or vehicles. And the other way, way it might be uh, to animate the <laughs> animate the the head uh, the windshield as a as a face, and you've seen that. Uh, I think there's a cartoon somewhere <laughs> that I've seen where they've animated the uh, windshield to be like a uh, a face, like an eyes, and the here is like a mouth, <laughs> like the where the uh, the front bumper is, and that becomes a mouth. So there, as you can see, there's no real formula for doing this, for doing uh, animating a, a vehicle uh, into, a, yeah, into a, a, an animated creation. <laughs> I, uh, I probably made a mistake here by doing it uh, right on the same layer. So I'm just going to erase some of the, uh, the things I have here and, and maybe just do it in, in layers from now on. But um, yeah, let's create a new layer for this here and, and show you a different a different way you could have a, a different vehicle here. So it could be a police car. Let's put police here on the side. I got a new layer there. Yeah, this is our new layer. So I can actually just should have done this in the first place. Uh, have a new layer with the, the things on so I don't have to backspace and wheels here. And this could be lights up here could be the eyes and it, it's a serious it's a police car so it could, and you could even put a little a police cap on it if you wanted to like a, let's see let's get do this right here police cap here and then have a little badge in the center and this could be your police car or yeah, the other thing is you could have, um, this could be um, ambulance, so it could be like, a, <laughs> you could have, um, let's create a new layer for that. So if this is a, an ambulance, you could have uh, a cross on the side, side of the car, and you could have, <laughs> this could be fun, you could have a little... Um, stethoscope or yeah stethoscope on the car all ready to to work <laughs> no there's no right or wrong answer it's what you feel would would work in the in the context of the cartoon uh, a creative mind will come up with something that will be fun for the reader and that's uh, and it's 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 a never ending thing you could you could tweak this you could say well i don't even don't even like this. I want to do something different for, for, um, for an ambulance. So you might create um, another type of thing. You might have, um, I don't know, 
for for a doctor what could it be um or for for, for an ambulance i guess is what i'm looking for it could be a um oh boy now i've really got myself stumped okay so if if you get stumped this is the best thing to do is, is to just say well let's try something else let's try uh not even a car we're not even going to do a car now let's do a tree okay here i have a tree background here now how do you animate a tree how do you make a tree look like it's alive um uh, i've i've actually had the problem uh in inanimate objects it's one of the biggest challenges i've actually based in drawing a thing but it was fun because it was a uh, i was always trying different things i would and that's the good thing about being stumped is that you can come back and try something and, uh, you know, put it aside and say, well, I'm going to come back to that later and keep creating other stuff. So the, the beauty of it is, is that you just never have to quit here. So what, what I did was uh, I started for a while doing this type of thing, a cartoony type of character here. And it, depending on the thing you're using it for, that might be just exactly what you want. You could do that or and you could have um let's see even with with this being the the character here you could have a whole forest of characters here like that the good thing is that you've kind of got a template there so you can uh we'll use the uh, black tool because uh the rest of this is in black and i'm going to use the pencil tool because i'm just sketching this is these are all just basically thumbnailing ideas and so we could have a, a tree over here that's angry. You know, maybe they're having an, a tree argument, <laughs> you know. Uh, and the, I thought it was kind of funny, the branch coming out, being the nose. And I thought it was a great idea, but it may not be the right idea for what the story is, too. And what I basically did was a big knot hole or a big um, hole in the tree where a branch has come out and, and kind of, you do see this in some trees where there's kind of a, a tree, a branch has come off and it's pulled right into the tree and it's created a big wound and it could be used as a mouth in a, in a cartoon of a tree. So there you go. There's two trees that, that are not, uh, not getting along <laughs> or one tree's mad at the other. That's uh, what the reason might be. I don't know, but in, in a, the right context this could be right i was asked to do a story uh that, that i did illustrate and uh has been published and is uh i just got word this week from the publisher that they sold a few more books and they're very happy um and uh i chose the, another way of doing this because this seemed to be very kind of uh it just didn't seem to fit the way she told a story very, very talented uh, storyteller and so I, I try to find a very subtle way of creating a, a, a personality for a tree, because especially since these trees didn't really have personalities, they were more reacting to things that were going on. And that's, to me, being this type, the cartoony type of character, I'm just going to take that away, go back to the cartoony character. Uh, the, the cartoony character was more, a little more animated and just seemed to be um it it created uh i don't know i just it wasn't subtle enough the the trees in the story were very subtle and they reacted to what was going on in the story and i wanted to show that without them being too showy <laughs> with this one these guys are kind of uh very showy very highly person personified and highly characterized uh the thing i chose for that story was just to have basically almost like a spiritual uh, symbolism of, of what the characters were. So what I did was I would, um, if I can show in this other tree here what I did, I basically would um, draw an emotion on the on the character. Let's see, no, let's try the subtle here. So, so if I was showing an emotion here, it would be, I would draw the, uh, oh, or pass these down there. Yeah, that's something I always have to remember is the opacity tool has to be way up to the, cranked up to the top there, and then you adjust your your tool here. So if this one's happy, 
we uh, show a couple of, of eyes here and the smiling mouth uh, here. And what I did to get, get the subtleness of it and kind of take away from the really forceful type of character was to uh, basically put the eraser tool and kind of create a, uh, a striation in in the facial expressions here. And then it would be just, it, it, it would be almost a sensory thing. Like the, the tree has personality, but it, it's not, um, you know, it's, it's, you're not fooling the, the reader by saying that this, this is going around and, and, uh, trees are, you know, walking around and have emotions and have stuff like that. But it, I thought it was very subtle. It was reacting. The, these trees are reacting to things and there was kind of gave it a, a character and it didn't it just didn't take away from it being an inanimate ob object too much i think when you're dealing with stories where you're um creating an inanimate object and you're making it animated you have to have to play that um that a devil's advocate, I guess. You have to decide what you're going to do. So I thought I thought this was a, a good solution to the problem. It may not be the one that you would have come up with, and uh, but I think it worked for the story, and uh, we're I, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out in that. In drawing trees, let's just uh, speaking of inanimate objects, let's just draw a couple trees here and show you how um, how I do that. And uh, even without the emotions, I just have a, for the story, I did the uh, the trees in. Uh, what I did was uh, I had the characters as basically very straight, straight up. It was, the, the tree was a tamarack tree, which very common tree in here in uh, uh, Midwestern Ontario and Grey Highlands and Grey County area. And uh, but you can uh, trees are very fun to draw, and and having grown up in the country and having grown grown up in very natural habitat, I guess uh, trees are something that that are fun for me to create create a cartoon of, and you can create uh, trees like this that are just basically uh, grow free. <laughs> See a lot of these. Uh, outside my window here or anywhere out in this area that I live in now. And uh, the trunks of the trees are very, you know, these are trees that are hundreds and hundreds of years old, so you can uh, build however you want. I usually have fluffy tufts of leaves for the for the branches to show. And I think that indicates trees to me. What I often do is have the increase the, the color at the bottom. This is something um, that I was, it's, it's a constant problem with me do, doing cartoons of, of farms and small towns and uh, nature is um, how to do, a, do kind of a quick short shorthand of what you're doing. This was, Something I remember seeing in um, Pogo, which is a comic strip by um, a cartoonist, great cartoonist named Walt Kelly. And this is what he would do. He would basically have the leaves kind of in ink blobs. And he'd do it very quickly. And it looked really nice, I have to say. And you can do if you If you don't like any part of it, you can kind of take your eraser in, in Procreate and just kind of very subtly take out some sections there and there you have your tree very simply done and, and you, all you have to really remember is that um is the textures the textures uh like the tree textures it's rough it's kind of um striated like it's obviously um uh yeah if you can get that duplicate that texture that's what you're doing there and with the leaves you're uh again you're you're just trying to show in a shorthand way that uh this is a tree <laughs> you know 
doesn't have to be you don't have to have every leaf perfect or every branch perfect but if, if you show that this is a tree and yeah let's just increase that a bit here if you just kind of show where the leaves end and where the branches begin i think you've you've been successful you can do that so there you go a very simple creation of a tree and uh that was that wasn't the way i did my trees in in the particular story i was talking about but um you know take a look at a tree and study what, what what is the overall look and how can i how can i make a shorthand of it make it look like a tree and not uh and not um you know not a uh a garden plant like a <laughs> like a oh, tomato plant it's it's just a matter it's just that simple and you can just practice it uh study what other people do that you like and in my case i studied uh, people like um walt kelly and um uh old milton kniff that used to do it i remember reading the old um comics uh, the adventure comics and part of what i loved about them was the way they drew things like this like trees how, how they look like trees even though they were just blobs of ink it was it was a pretty wonderful experience to to learn that so anyway so um let's uh let's move on so so, so let's how can we just uh, show you a, a little more uh, about what i'm trying to discuss with you today now how would you if if someone came to you and said um i want to show the difference between um Today's history, or sorry, uh, the way uh, we are today and 50 years ago. How would I show that? <laughs> That's a big problem. Uh, so what you need to do is, um, so what what uh, does represent today? So you need to find symbols of what represents today. So today, the, it would be 2022. One way of doing it might be to just show the year 2022 in a modern looking font kind of a hip 2022 font here. We're just going to That's a very real problem. I mean, and I can't imagine an artist saying, "Oh, that's that will be easy. That'll be a real challenge. That'll be fun." So how how am I going to do that? Uh, 2022, the today's era and what would be, you know, symbols? What are symbols of today's era? That would be what you would do and say uh, 50 years ago would be, let's see, what would be 50 years ago? Anyway, let's just try to look for some symbols. Like today we have computers and phones and we've got uh, technology. We could have, um, I don't know, we could have a, a big robot. Could be the symbol. I I don't know. I'm just I'm grasping at straws. But you you might be of the generation that will be fielding these uh, these requests from. I don't know if I will be or not. Yeah, let's have a cartoon that will show the. Twenty twenty two versus uh, fifty years ago. I I don't even have a. A clue of when 50 years ago would be would be 1972 that would be 50 years ago that would be so 1972 <laughs> what happened in 1972 well so we try to get the font a little more like 1972 so actually that wouldn't be it it would be more very 1972 was right at the end of the kind of the the groovy, really heavy, roundish type letters and words. Yeah, we will round these off a bit here. So, 1872 blobby, round. And what happened in 1972? Well, a lot happened in 1972. There was uh, the, the terrorist attack at the, uh, the Olympics. Um, there was the 1972 hockey series with Canada and Russia. 
which uh, was interesting. So since that impacted me, I might just have a little picture of a couple of hockey players here. <laughs> just kind of doodles of hockey players with, you know, one with the, the Russian symbol on it and uh, one with Canadian maple leaf on it with their hockey sticks crossed here. I'm just doing a sketch here because I, <laughs> but it's, it's, I'm just trying to show you the, the problem, the real problem that could happen if, if you um, get into this, but, but if you work at it, you might come up with the, the greatest symbol of, uh, of the time. Okay. And maybe a robot, maybe, uh, I don't know. Pandemic a robot with a mask on. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, during the pandemic and maybe COVID nineteen here and maybe um, I don't know. It, it it it's a very difficult problem, but you can have a lot of fun with it. Creating like what, getting your mind thinking and doing some research, and that's uh, that can be a lot of the fun of what we do. Uh, just. Uh, just the, the very fact that we we've had to challenge ourselves to to solve the problem. Um, another problem might be to uh, if you had somebody wanting to show something like um, the planets, <laughs> like uh, the the planets have been uh, created in Roman and uh, Greek mythology as as being gods. So let's say you had a situation where you were, uh, I'm going to create a new layer here for this too, and just show a couple of balls here of representing planets. So there's one and there's another one here. So let's say, um, okay, let's say this is Jupiter, Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, which is uh, known for the big red dot here. And it's a lot of striations. It's full of, all these unusual gases here so we're it's not a perfect rendition of of, of uh saturn or, sorry jupiter and then of earth here so we've got uh this really tiny little planet here and we're just going to kind of make it look like there's there's landforms on it and water on, and it, it's kind of look like <laughs> some of the uh the forms on it here some of the uh water versus land forms so here we go, and we've got, uh, let's say that we have to create a, a character out of these. This is a comic strip, <laughs> Jupiter and Earth, uh, you know. So how would we create it? So what I would say would, would be fun would be the red dot could be like an eye. And uh, just to be fun, I could, so that because it doesn't have two eyes, I could just put an eye patch. And you see how it adds a bit of character, a bit of personality to the to the drawing, and it, it kind of makes makes fun of the uh, makes fun of things somewhat. And we could even give him a big thick eyebrow here. And Earth could be this little, this tiny, cute little planet. Never hurts anybody. Just kind of. Just kind of nice, sweet sunshine. <laughs> so you've got your two characters here. Uh, this is a fun little exercise. This is a good way to challenge yourself, your creativity too, to build to build something. I mean, uh, just hu humanifying it or or building um, things on it. You can add to this too. You can give him teeth, and you can even think of dialogue that they'd have, like uh, like he, he could have a a big pirate's mustache here. So it's already we've got this really fun relationship between two very different characters here. And then, of course, that is the the whole crux of cartooning is uh, building characters and, and relationships that we can all identify with. And uh, anyway, so that was just a 10-minute a, a 10-minute build here for this one. And if you don't if you don't like that, you can do something else. You can uh, there's so many different things you can build.
with with comics and with with different things like um we were talking about politics so politics uh in the u.s they've got the donkey for the i think it's the elephant for the one party and i think i've seen cartoons where they've tried to make cartoons of the characters here the the elephant and the and the donkey and so you could just do a tricky elephant and donkey <laughs> right you can You've, we've probably all, all seen this. I, I haven't seen it for a very long time because I don't know why they don't, because they, I mean, because be, they really are like donkeys and elephants. I don't know. But um, anyway, it's, it's fun. It, it's fun. And it, it's a quick way to represent uh, the characters that you're trying to show here. So, and the donkey, of course, with the furry neck here. So there, it, it, these are characters that represented the Republicans as the elephants and the and the uh, Democrats as the donkeys. But th those are not seen much anymore. But um, they were pretty easy way to represent them in the editorial cartoons back in the day. So yeah, that, that's another thing. And, and uh, part of our job as cartoonists is to use things like symbols and um, colors, mascots. Um, especially you know as long as they're not copy written by somebody else but you you can satirize uh, you know that is uh, legal to do that satirize a, an established symbol because uh, but you can't do it in advertising you have to watch your your step there too of course if, but if you're doing it for um, to represent an idea that uh, that you're trying to express in a cartoon um, a symbol can be very important and uh, and colors and other things that represent it that's part of our job is to um, is to re represent it as, as clearly as possible and to use symbols and to do the research and and get the right message out there and and only you can do that and I hope uh, I hope you take that important that important role and and uh, and glean that down to where it should be and to uh, take it to, you know, enjoy, enjoy yourself as you're doing it. Uh, so let's uh, kind of review what we did here. And I'm just going to go back to the start here. We had the character, of course, the bear and the, um, the horse, <laughs> our horse character. And uh, then we went into things like cars and trees, and um, I don't know if I can find them, but uh, the trees, of course, had a lot of fun with them, and and showed you a little bit of how uh, the problem I dealt with problems I had, and then of course comes to uh, symbols and, and characters and and what they mean and how they can uh, they can express a, and I really had fun drawing the tree. That was very that's something I always love to do. And I hope uh, that helped you to, you know, to to sit down and uh, maybe you'll take a stab at it yourself. See if you can draw a tree. Look at look at a tree. Um, look at whatever whatever thing you want to draw, whatever thing you have been challenged to uh, to create in a in a cartoon form. Um, challenge yourself to do that and and. Uh, and if you ever need any help, I'm here to uh, bounce ideas off, and, and Tom is as well. Uh, we're very happy to do that, and uh, um, I hope this lesson helped. I'm going to uh, turn things over to Tom now. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, I'm just going to put my mic on here so Jeff can hear me. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, you can probably hear me now too, but uh, thank you. Uh, I have. Um, I just thought quickly, I saw a question here, and I, I think it's always great when we can get uh, a quick question here. So, um, Leia is just asking, what's your favorite brush to use for sketching? For sketching? Um, I like the pencil tools. Um, I'm just going to show you now the uh, the drawing tool I have. Uh, the gloaming tool is a nice um, texture to it. And, and this uh, goes back to my <laughs> my days as uh, when I drew on, on sketch pads. I liked a nice tooth in the uh, in the sketch pad paper, and it just uh, felt right for me. But um, we don't use sketch pads now. But I do I do like the 
the looseness of it and the, and the um, you know, you can get a spread out uh, feeling about it. And I've actually used um, something that, that duplicates uh, like a grease pencil, <laughs> if I can be so uh, blunt to say that, because that's an old, that's antiquated tools, uh, uh, grease pencil, which is a lot, a lot of tooth to it, like a lot of, um, but you can get a good, nice stroke with it. And that could, will be very expressive. And so that's what I'm always looking for, something that will that will quickly and, uh, you know, sweetly express the, the, sweep, the sweeping movement I want in the drawing. So that's what I've chosen. This is a gloaming tool, and it's in the drawing, uh, in the brush library, the drawing uh, menu. But there's other ones here too that I that I like. But the, no, the, I've experimented a bit, and the gloaming is the one that duplicates that grease pencil uh, feel. And that that was something I uh, learned as an animator is that if you could do it quickly, if you could do your initial drawing quickly and ske uh, sketch it, uh, you know, the the more the finer the line when you sketch it will take you longer. <laughs> And that uh, was a long time learning that, but uh, I, I found with the grease pencil, you could do something quickly and if you could get your line pretty much figured out right away. So I would say anything that's um, that's thick enough that you can put some expression in and that you can uh, work with later to do your final drawing, like your, your final line, which is a nice solid uh, black line, and it, it is, which is my choice in my case. Perfect. Thanks, Jeff. That was, uh, yeah, yeah, fantastic. fantastic. Again, just want to uh, uh, thank everyone for joining us. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, to be able to do, bring you this online session. Uh, if you are um, in one of our uh, library uh, partners uh, as a member, so that's uh, the Blue Mountains Public Library, Collingwood Public Library, Wasaga Beach Public Library, we will have uh, continue our uh, in-person workshops with Jeff. So that's coming up next Saturday for the Blue Mountains Public Library and Collingwood Public Library. Uh, there's still some spaces available in the Collingwood Public Library session. And then uh, two weeks after that, there's a, I believe we end up with some Victoria Day really soon. Spring's coming, summer's here. Then we have our Wasaga Beach Public Library. So do check out at each library's website. You can sign up for these uh, these uh, uh, youth children focused sessions. Uh, space is limited usually to about six. Um, and uh, really excited for, us, for you to join us there. So thank you to Jeff uh, for doing this and uh, we hope that was a great session. And uh, uh, we do have another one, uh, June, uh, the first week of June, uh, Jeff will come back online. So hope you can join us for that as well. Uh, in the meantime, uh, do uh, check uh, all of our programming out at tbmcs.ca. You can email me, uh, tom at tbmcs.ca, if you have any questions. And just want to thank our, uh, our partners again, uh, Canada Council for the Arts and our three library partners. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you again soon. Take care.